Did your heart sink a few hours ago when the exit poll was revealed and your party is predicted to get just 10 seats in the whole of the country? Well, it certainly was a surprise, but then um, 2010 was a surprise. Uh, I felt in 2010 we'd make an enormous stride forward, but it seems that uh, when it comes to real elections, um, hopes are often dashed for reasons that are often quite hard to understand and fathom. Have you got two speeches written tonight, John? One of you win and one of you lose. Uh, every time I come to the count, I've got two speeches written. Uh, can I thank uh, my, my team, my supporters, people of Southport, and all you good people who've been hanging around here for quite some time. Um, I, I stand here with a, more than a degree of relief on what is not a very good night for the Liberal Democrats. So it's just after 10 o'clock in the morning here in Southport and I'm off to vote in the general election 2015. The seat is currently held by the Liberal Democrats. John Pugh has a majority of just over 6,000. Will he hold on to that? Will he hold on to his seat? What about Damien Muir, the Conservative candidate, the youngest candidate in the race? Then there's Liz Savage for Labour, UKIP, Terry Durant, this will this be third time lucky for him? And then we have Jacqueline Barlow, for the Sapport Party and Lawrence Rankin for the Green Party. Good morning, morning gents. Good morning. Yeah. Now outside my polling booth, the one in queue. Mike, are you hoping to be re-elected? I see you've got your rosette on. Certainly am, yes, thank you. Yeah, all being well. What about people saying that the Liberal Democrats are going to suffer this time because of going into coalition with the Conservatives? Have you noticed that on the doorstep? Certainly not, no. Uh, I think locally in Southport, John Pugh is a big name and John Pugh is very popular. And I think a lot of people in Southport go for the person rather than the party, really, Martin. And Philip, UKIP? Yeah, UKIP, yeah. It's the third time, uh, or the third attempt by Terry Durant to win it for UKIP. Indeed. Are you hopeful? Uh, we are hopeful of that, yes, because there's been quite a swing towards UKIP, uh, particularly in Southport. The 10 o'clock exit poll shows that the Lib Dems could go down to 10 in the whole of the UK. You must be disappointed at that. I say let's wait until the let's wait until the seats are counted. We can't second guess anything. Um, you know, we're we're just waiting to get the results in. If it does go down to 10, would you be disappointed? 
Now, come on, Martin. That is, uh, we would we would all be very very disappointed if seats were won on the amount of literature and the amount of work that our volunteers and our candidates put in, then we'd be sweeping to a majority. However, it doesn't work that way. So, as I say, we'll wait and see and, and we'll keep our fingers crossed. Any idea what time we're going to get this result? <laughs> Not quick enough for me. <laughs> I want it to come really quick. I don't want it to come at all. <laughs> they reckon three o'clock. Another four hours. <laughs> Listen, what's four hours when you've been up since four? <laughs> Speak to you later. Cheers. Bye bye now. How do you feel? I feel pretty good with regard to optimism. I feel dead flat with regards to my energy levels at the present time. I've completely worn myself out. Uh, I would say during the whole of this year, really, it's been the longest campaign I've ever known, which is obviously something we get with regards to the fixed-term parliaments. But it seems to have gone on and on and on. And uh, But no, with, with regard to optimism, I, I, I think we might well come out of this pretty well tonight. I think we might, we, we, we're, we're certainly in with a chance of winning. If we don't win, I think we'll certainly come second. You're confidently predicting either first or second place for UKIP? Confidently, Martin, confidently. And if you're third? I won't be third, I'll be first or second. I'll speak to you later, Terry. OK, nice to speak to you, Martin. Uh, like me, you're an out hand at elections, especially general elections. Just come past 11 o'clock here in the dunes. How, how do you think it's going? I think we've won. So an hour after the vote's closed, you can predict a victory for the Lib Dems? Well, I can tell you that on a Tory, a Tory box, the Lib, the John Pugh has won. And that's good enough. And Now, there may be some other strange boxes where people are voting in a very strange way, but I think that's good enough for me. What about the, the exit poll that the BBC revealed at 10 o'clock, where your party goes down to 10 MPs in the whole of the country? The BBC didn't reveal the exit poll. The BBC revealed a projection from the exit poll, and it, it seems to be on a national swing. Garbage in, garbage out. But it was a very accurate last time. I say last time was very different. The, all the evidence is Mr Ashcroft in particular, Lord Ashcroft he calls himself, um, says that it's going to be very different and I think that's going to be the case. So you're confidently predicting John Pugh will win here in Southport. He got a 6,000 plus majority last time. What do you reckon the majority will be this time? Um, less than half of that. And who do you reckon will come second to John? The Conservative. Not UKIP? No. Who will come third then? UKIP. Fourth? Labour. You may as well finish it off. No, I haven't. Fifth and sixth. I haven't gone beyond that. I haven't looked. So I'm not going to make any predictions beyond that. As for Labour, how's it going? Um, it's going quite well. Um, we certainly think that we've increased our sh um, share of the vote from 2010. We're hoping to have increased our vote from 2005 as well. So give me some numbers. What, what do you think the result will be? Um, I think it's going to be quite um, close between the Conservatives and Liberal Democrats. Um, I think it's always been a much closer seat than anyone's thought. Um, possibly for us round about 20%. Um, apart from that, I don't really know because I've only just arrived. Would you be disappointed if you came fourth? Um, if I came fourth, I'd be slightly disappointed. But, you know, as long as we've increased our vote share, then we've done a good job in Southport. And the campaign as a whole, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, the campaign's been absolutely wonderful. You know, we've got so many more people um, energised within the local Labour Party. So it bodes well for the future. All right, I'll speak to you after the results announced. All right, thank you. Terry Jones, you're fighting in Ainge till we get the results of that tomorrow. You're leader of the Conservative group on the council. You've got Conservative blood, I assume, so what does your blood tell you tonight? Who's going to win in Southport? The blood tells me that we're going to win tonight. It's going to be very close, but it's time for a change in Southport, and people want a change, and we will give the change they want, and they're coming out to vote for us today. Give me your prediction. By how many will Damien win? I think Damien will win by a couple of hundred. It'll be that, that close? That close, yeah. John at the moment has a 6,000 plus majority. 
there was in 2010 there was many issues why John had that majority. Southport Conservatives had an infighting. We had bad press. There was a lot of issues. We've come out. We've cleaned up. We're on the. We've changed our attitude, and we're there for the people now, not ourselves. And Ainsdale, how do you reckon he'll do in that tomorrow? From what I've picked up today, I think I should hold my seat. I hope I hold my seat. I've tried my best. That's all I can do. Are you still going to tell me that you're going to win Southport? I'm still going to tell you that I have as good a chance as anybody else. I've had a lovely day today, long day, hard day. I visited every polling booth. Uh, I don't know whether any other candidate can say that, but I've done my very best. Hang on, last time we spoke you said you were going to win. Not that you had as good a chance as anybody else. No, we, we played this game last time we spoke. I would like to think I can win, I feel I can win, but I've got as good a chance as anybody. The campaign itself, have you enjoyed it? I have, I have. It's been hard because I've been working as well at the same time. Um, but I've enjoyed it. I mean, if, you, if you're given this opportunity, you should grab it. Will you be standing for Sefton Council next year? Absolutely, definitely not. Southport should be out of Sefton, hopefully by next year. But assuming we're still in Sefton this time next year, which we will be, isn't the argument it's best to fight from inside rather than throw stones from outside? Well, you just have to see how things go. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm with the Southport party. We're a campaign party. We don't have funds. We've done this ourselves. If we can afford something, we shall do something. But would you stand yourself as a councillor next year? If I'm given the opportunity. I couldn't afford to do it myself, but if I'm given the opportunity, yes, I would. Damien? Your, your prediction for the result here in Southport? Well, as I always say, I'm never going to give that prediction. I'm just very hopeful tonight, looking at the... You can give a prediction. The, the polls have closed. Well, absolutely, but I mean, I, we've been very hopeful throughout this campaign. I'm very hopeful tonight, and we'll be looking around, seeing what happens as it goes on counting throughout the uh, rest of the evening, and uh, very hopeful is what I would say. Are you going to win? I'm hoping that I win. I, I think that we have had some good um, results for us coming through uh, on the doorstep as I've said over the last few weeks and some people at the polling stations were saying to me today they were voting Conservative this time and they hadn't in previous years so that's good as well. I'm hearing from members of the Liberal Democrats that it's going to be very close here in Southport, would you agree with that? Absolutely, I think the result here in Southport was always going to be very close, it makes it a bit more interesting and it will be very interesting to see the results at the end. Have you enjoyed the campaign? I've absolutely immensely enjoyed the campaign. I love campaigning. I think it's a great part of our political system uh, and um, a culmination of which we'll see tonight. Have you sorted out accommodation in London yet? No, I don't think it would be appropriate to do that at this time, Martin, but uh, very nice of you to ask. Train time timetables? No, I shall be waiting to see what happens tonight and we'll make uh, the appropriate arrangements either way. You're also a realist, Damien. If you don't lose, would it be a massive upset for you? So if you don't lose, or if you don't win, would it be a massive upset for you? Um, of course, I would like to uh, win this evening. I've put a lot of work into this. I think I'll be a great MP for Southport. But if I don't, it's not about that. It's about getting, you're picking yourself up and getting on with the job. I'll speak to you later. Thank you. Councillor Mike Booth, we, we met earlier this morning uh, when I went to vote in queue. Um, several hours later, how do you feel? Tired. Absolutely shattered. Uh, it's been a good day though. Big turnout, lots of people turning out. We had queues at most of the polling stations I sat at. Um, lots of people seem to be voting for the first time, Martin. We seem to have quite a few people, she was saying middle-aged people, who've either not voted before or not voted for maybe 20 or 30 years, which is interesting. And obviously we don't know which way they're going with the vote. Well, I'm going to ask you now to predict the result. I can't. It's that close. Uh, obviously, I, I said to you this morning that John would win uh, the general and I would win the local and I still feel the same but I think it's going to be closer than perhaps I thought this morning but I'm still going the same that John would win the general and I'll get the local. 
Right, Tom Glover, um, a veteran Conservative politician here in Southport. How do you reckon it's going? Well, I believe it's gone very well. It's quite a high poll, I understand, from what they tell me. And it, uh, it's good that people are turning out to vote this time. You know, we always worry that it'll be a low poll and it's not a clear reflection of what their intentions are. But uh, this time it's been OK. And what's your prediction? Well, difficult to say. I've just been listening to the national news where the prediction of the exit poll is that the Liberals are going to lose a lot of seats. In They're going to go down to 10 in the whole country. In the country. Now, whether that will affect Southport or not, I don't know. And your party, the Conservatives, gained the most seats, but not the majority? No, not quite the majority on the exit poll. I hope perhaps that is a little bit incorrect and we get a few more um, uh, MPs elected. Do you still enjoy being on the political, political scene here in Southport? Well, I've never been off it, have I? <laughs> I mean, uh, if I reckon it up, I'm now in my 60th year working for Southport Conservatives. You still enjoy it? Oh, well, yes, yes. And uh, my wife, of course, would have been here tonight, but she injured herself canvassing about four weeks ago. And unfortunately, she's been in the car with me today, but not got out. And uh, But she's feeling a bit tired tonight, so I've left her at home. She actually is the Conservative Party's uh, agent for the candidate. How's your campaign gone? Well, things have gone pretty well. I mean, it's been a very long day today, but uh, that's the way these things go. I mean, we've been getting a lot of uh, positive response. People, uh, you know, wishing us well, and uh, I think we've had a really good campaign. Can you predict for me the result? I can't predict the result, I must admit. I think it's going to be quite close. I think there's, uh, there's a, a... Will the Green Party, will you be near the top or the bottom? I'll predict we'll be in the middle. How about that? Middle of the road. John Pugh to win, do you reckon? I really don't know. I probably would have thought John Pugh was fairly safe at the beginning of this uh, campaign, but I think there's been quite strong campaigns both by the Tories and by Labour, in fact. So, I don't know. And are you pleased with the impact the Green Party nationally have had on this campaign? Very much so. I think the Green Party have really come through as uh, as a genuine, um, you know, one of the big players in in this election campaign. It's just a pity that because we're still stuck with our first past the post election system, that that's probably not going to be reflected in seats in Westminster. But that's something we need to really push for with a you know sort of general groundswell of public opinion, uh, rather than necessarily the seats in the House. And the campaign in Southport, finally, have you enjoyed being a candidate? Yes, I have. It's been a really interesting experience. It's been uh, good to get involved in the cut and thrust of some of the debates and some of the interviews and some of the media. Uh, yeah, it's been a really enjoyable experience. You must have enjoyed KGV the other week. KGV was great. It was fantastic to see so many young people there and, and such a genuine interest in what was going on and some really interesting questions, uh, a little bit different from some of the others that we've faced. Right, Tim from SouthportGB.com, Roving Eye. What's your prediction for tonight's result? Uh, I think it's going to be very close. Uh, at the moment, I'll have to plump for John Pugh. And who do you reckon will be second in second place? I think the, the uh, Damien, is it Damien Moore? I think he'll come second and I think UKIP will probably come third. With Liz Savage, is it, in fourth place? The Greens in fifth and the Southport Party sixth. So you know all about politics, you know the political scene in Southport. I don't really, I've just been to so many of these meetings that uh, I've got used to all the names, but um, hopefully the best man will win, or woman. From a reporting point of view, have you found this campaign in Southport interesting? Absolutely not. Boring. Same old, same old, all the time. And, uh, you know, as soon as it's over the better, we can all get on with life again. But do you agree with me that the KGV one, that was the best out of all the hustings in Southport? The, the students certainly got stuck into the other politicians, as you would have expected, yeah. They're not frightened of asking questions. Margaret Carney, Chief Executive of the Council. From your perspective as returning officer, how do you think tonight's going? 
Um, tonight's going according to plan. We've uh, finished the verification, we've started the count um, in line with the expectations that we had. Um, it's always quite tricky with a combined uh, election. You've got the two ballot, ballot papers in the same box, so it will always take a bit longer than it would do with a normal local election. But I expect, anticipate, we might be finished for about five o'clock this morning. Five o'clock? I've been covering politics for 40 years and I can't remember one this late. What, why is it so long? Um, I, I don't think that's too long. I remember the last general election. I think I left Crosby Town Hall at that election after six o'clock. So I just think it's the way things are. We have to be accurate. Um, we have to do things properly. Um, you know, there's a lot riding on these elections. So we want to make sure that we're, we're doing it properly and we won't skimp on the time it takes to do that. If we're finished before five o'clock, then there'll be a lot more happy people. All six candidates I've spoken to tonight said they've been very happy with the way the campaign, political campaign, has been run in Southport. Are you happy with the way everything's gone? from your point of view? Uh, in terms of the administration of the election, yes I am. Um, I've been out to a number of the polling stations today. Uh, lots of the polling stations have been busy, uh, but again, having spoken to a number of people attending that, they've been extremely happy. Even if they've had to wait a little bit longer than they would have hoped to, they've been extremely happy with the way that the poll clerks have dealt with them. So yes, I'm happy with the administration so far, but it's still a long way to go. Uh, we actually won't finish the counting for this election until Saturday afternoon. For the local council? For both the local council and the parish council. Will you be able to get any sleep between now and then? Uh, I'm sure I might be able to grab a couple of hours. Margaret Carney, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, John Pugh, coming up to one o'clock in the morning, um, how hopeful are you? Well, I'm always hopeful. Uh, there's a good Liberal Democrat vote in town, and I hope it's come out tonight, or I hope it came out yesterday, actually. Yeah. The campaign itself, have you enjoyed it? How's it been? Uh, candidates, particularly defending candidates, never particularly enjoy uh, campaigns. That being said, this has been probably one of the most civilised campaigns I've engaged in uh, in Southport. I think the candidates have managed to get through it all without uh, falling out with one another, or forming a lifelong enmity um, and I think that's a credit to all of them. Um, I think as you were in the hustings, the debate's been civilised um, and uh, at times quite thoughtful. Um, that's not actually been reflected nationally in terms of the debates uh, but I think uh, people in Southport can take credit with the fact that uh, they have thoughtfully digested the issues, considered the issues, and the candidates have put their points across, I think, uh, without acrimony and politely. Did your heart sink a few hours ago when the exit poll was revealed and your party is predicted to get just 10 seats in the whole of the country? Well, it certainly was a surprise, but then um, 2010 was a surprise. Uh, I felt in 2010 we'd make an enormous stride forward, but it seems that uh, when it comes to real elections, um, hopes are often dashed for reasons that are often quite hard to understand and fathom. But if they're predicting only 10 in the country, that must put you, support your seat at risk. Well, yes, it put all seats at risk, so I would have thought. Um, that being said, I, I, I'm, I mean, there are a lot of people more, far more experts in I'm an expert in polling than myself, who are casting doubt on this particular exit poll. Uh, the Labour Party, for example, on the basis of their own analysis of where they're getting their vote, uh, are casting doubt on it, the Scottish Nationalists are, and so on. So we'll have to see as the night goes on uh, exactly what transpires. And finally, if that prediction, the exit poll prediction, does come true, do you think Nick Clegg can remain as leader? Um, I think his position will be difficult. Uh, he came into power. Uh, with the express ambition of doubling the number of MPs and if you move from 50 odd to 10 that's not substantial progress is it? He should be replaced. Um, I think he should consider whether he is quite the right person to take the Liberal Democrats from that situation. If that situation arises, if on the other hand we end up as the YouGov poll suggests with 31, that's a completely different scenario. And finally, finally, have you got two speeches written tonight, John? One of you win and one of you lose. Uh, every time I come to the count, I've got two speeches written. I'll speak to you later when the result's announced. Okay. 
Tony, just gone three o'clock in the morning when I arrived four hours ago. You said John John will win, so tell me your prediction now. John will win with a reduced majority. I would say a considerably reduced majority. You said last time half his majority, which you take it down to 3,000, so what's your prediction now? Well, I don't know. It's going to be less than that, but not. I don't think that much less. We'll see. We're, we're likely to do rather well here compared with what the Lib Dems have done elsewhere in the country. What have you heard about the national scene? Well, we've we've heard that um, some of the London seats are very close, and maybe, maybe you know they, they haven't been declared yet. They may go for recounts, so that's disappointing. Vince Cable, touch and go apparently. We shall see. So this uh, exit poll prediction of ten MPs for Lib Dems, do you reckon that's going to come true? No. How many MPs? That I don't know, but I, I just thought ten was 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 ludicrous. Um, I think Southport is something like the 22nd best Lib Dem seat. So if we hold this, I can't say everybody above us will win. I can't say everyone below us will lose. But, uh, you know, it seems to be there and thereabouts. So even at this late stage, if I was a betting man, but money on John? Yes. Yes. But I don't bet. I've only bet three times in my life and I've won rather a lot of money each time. At the Grand National? No, it was always on politics. Have you got any money on this, on the result tonight? No, I decided to give up betting completely many years ago. Tony, thank you very much. OK. I have a declaration of results of poll for the Southport Parliament member. I, Jill Cool, being the Deputy Returning Officer at the above election, do hereby declare and give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Barlow, Jacqueline Anne, the Southport Party, 992. Durrance, Terry John, UK Independence Party, 7,429. Yeah. Conservative Party candidate, 12,330. Thank <laughs> you, John David, Liberal Democrats, 13,652. <laughs> The number of ballot papers rejected as follows was 18 for voting for more than one candidate and 153 for voting unmarked or wholly void for uncertainty. The turnout was 65.75% and I do hereby declare that John David Pugh is duly elected. Thank you. team, my supporters, people of Southport, and all you good people who've been hanging around here for quite some time. Um, I, I stand here with a, more than a degree of relief on what is not a very good night for the Liberal Democrats. My party has shown right across the country an enormous amount of heroism in terms of campaigning and working. But unfortunately, that heroism has been made necessary by what were quite serious strategic mistakes made during the early stages of the coalition. And I do hope after this, as a party we will have learnt, and the leadership and the membership of the party will go forward wiser and ready to fight again. Thank you very much.
John, your reaction? Um, as I say, <laughs> elements of relief on the watch is not a very good night for the Liberal Democrats. Um, having had a look at the result now in detail, um, it is certainly true that uh, the increase in Labour votes in Southport would and came very close to uh, helping return a Conservative. Um, and I hope people will study the results in the future and see what could have happened. Um, that being said, you know, personally, uh, I'm glad that my team is rewarded for what has been enormous amount of hard work uh, with a victory. And of course, consolations to the other parties who put in an enormous amount of work and not got the result. Uh, but, you know, I think Liberal Democrats are entitled to some, some good news on the night. If you go down to 10, as some polls are suggesting, would you put yourself forward as the leader, leader of your party? I'm not, just at this moment, looking for any more stress in my life than I've currently got. Who would you like to see? Tim Farron, Norman Lamb? I think they're in the, I know, I haven't actually seen who's returned, but amongst those I expect to see returned, there are some eminently talented and able people who at some day, I'm sure, will play a leadership role in the party. Who? Well, uh, you, you've mentioned three of them yourself, actually. Two. Uh, and I would add to that Steve Webb as well. Uh, all people who are very bright, very able, very talented, and have a great political future ahead of them, I hope. Do you want to see your party go into coalition with the Conservatives again? Uh, put everything together, made everything really smooth today. Thank you very much for your help. I know it's been a long night, and I know you will be appreciate your accuracy and your speed. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again at the next count. Thank you. So sorry, Malta, I forgot, I forgot what, question, what, what question was. Who should be the leader of your party? Who should be the, well, we have, we have a leader at the moment. We'll go back and we'll deliberate in that. But I think you asked me particularly about coalition. I, coalition, yes. If it was going to be a future coalition of any shape or form, it could not resemble this existing coalition because the coalition, as I repeatedly say, tediously say, was built upon a model of tribal politics where we were just seen as having, you know, as we're left the middle ground and joined the Tory tribe. And I think it's not in the interest of Liberal Democrats or, for that matter, the interest of sensible politics to have it dominated by tribalism. I mean, I spoke to a woman this morning and she said, oh, I'm not voting for you, sir, because you went in with the Conservatives. And I said, it's not a matter of who you're in, it's a matter of what a government does. Um, and that's what a government needs to be judged on, not on... Um, you know, alignments at one time or another, because you, you know yourself, Martin, that in Sefton, you know, deals have been done between Conservatives and Labour uh, in the past, uh, a cooperation has occurred, and it hasn't damaged any of the parties because it's done within a framework which is less adversarial, less tribal than the House of Commons. John Pugh, newly elected MP for Southport, congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Terry, your reaction? Martin, a major disappointment. I never thought for one minute that we would come fourth. I thought we had to come either first or second. I can only think that it's because of the, the campaign that's been run against us by the national press in this country, particularly the Tory press, um, saying that any vote other than for the Conservatives was a vote to bring the SNP to Westminster. Terry, you're losing your voice. Martin, I lost my voice somewhere around about mid-January and it's never come back since. Congratulations, anyway, for being a decent candidate in an interesting campaign. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time. You've got to do this, Damien, I'm afraid. Your reaction, Damien? Well, my reaction is that I'm obviously I'd rather have won this, but I think that we fought a very good campaign. I think the result was very close in the end, much closer than what was being predicted only two days ago. So I'm quite happy with what we have achieved. And again, my campaign started seven months ago. I've not had 14 years of doing this. So I think in those seven months, we've proven that we Conservatives have shown as to be a formidable force within Southport. Would you consider standing for Southport again? If they'll have me, yes, I would. So five years, 2020, we'll see Damien Moore again. We'll see what happens. Um, I would quite happily fight Southport again. Um, it looks as though we might just take the majority. So the uh, doomsayers that said we were going to have a, another, go another election in six months probably won't be right. It looks as though we are on course now. So uh, uh, it looks pretty positive for us. You've enjoyed it, though, haven't you? I've enjoyed every minute of this for the whole seven months. I've enjoyed coming to Southport. I've enjoyed meeting people. I'm so grateful for every single one of them that has voted for me. And I think it shows that uh, I've re-injected some life back into the Conservatives in Southport, who I'm sure will do very well at the local elections tomorrow and will take this seat next time round. Damien Moore, thank you very much. 
Thank you, Martin. It's been a pleasure. Can I have you? I actually came third. Um, I did, yes. I think you thought I'd come fourth, didn't you, Martin? I thought, yes, yeah. <laughs> um, we're really, really pleased with the result. Um, we've doubled the result from 2010, and that's quite an achievement. And I think there's only one candidate who's done better than that for Southport Labour, and that was John Prescott. So I'm quite happy to come second to John Prescott. Would you consider fighting Southport again? I certainly would consider fighting Southport again. We may see you here in five years' time. You may see me here in five years' time. You might see me here later in the year, depending on how tonight goes. It's intriguing. Oh, you mean the yeah, ah, possible second election? Well, that's what people have spoken about, but we don't know yet, do we? Let's wait and see what happens with the results. Well done. OK, thank you.